listen up, people listen up. Now, people listen up. People Drawing listen comic up. strips is a tough way to make a living. There are very few successful full-time cartoonists, and it takes years to build an audience large enough to make ends meet. Keith Knight is a rising star in the world of alternative comic artists. I would love to, you know, really take over the world, actually. <laughs> with no shortage of ambition, Keith is making a name for himself with an ever-growing body of work. His first strip, The K Chronicles, ran for five years in the San Francisco Examiner and now appears in alternative weeklies around the country. The strip is a series of semi-autobiographical stories. I'd say about 90% of it's true. Every strip is based in truth somehow, some way. I'll twist it off into some strange way, like, geez, what if this happened? Or, you know, what if that happened? Or this is like a common feeling that I'm sure I'm not the only one who gets this common feeling from. So let me, let me talk about that type of feeling. Life's Little Victories came about. Um, I just wanted to come up with this, this strip that like, or these little incidents that happen in your life that you say, you know, makes you go, yeah, to yourself. There's like a lot of little tiny things that just make you go, yeah. Keith's latest project is a series of single panels called Think. They represent a departure from his autobiographical work and focus more on social issues and politics. I remember doing my first self-published zine in fifth grade. It was a parody of Mad Magazine. It was called Kooky Magazine. And I didn't have a Xerox or anything to make copies, so I had to copy them by hand. I would make three copies of the exact same thing and sell them for 15 cents. I just remember a food fight happening. By sixth period, I had done a story about it. It was like I was on the front line, you know. I was there, and I, I was, you know. So that way, anybody who had any, you know, the rumors and the lies and the innuendo, you know, I was there. I was embedded. I, I consider myself the first embedded cartoonist. Well, he's writing about himself, but he's writing about so much more than himself. So it's Keith's world, but it's the world we all live in. He talks a lot about social situations, he talks a lot about political situations, but he personalizes it so it makes it completely understandable and accessible to the general public. There's one black person, there's a, a, another black person here. But you know, cats have better representation in the comics than, than black people do. I get a lot of positive mail from black people like, wow, it's really cool that, you know, that you're representing something that, that, that I, can, I can relate to. I'm just about to meet with my publisher and graphic designer about my new book, which is a collection of my single panel called Think. You know, this is our first first meeting on it. Oh, super good. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Here's my old books. Actually, it's not on the front there. All right, so. simple on the front there either. Have you, you haven't done a thing book? No, this is the first one. Yeah. Basically, the stars are really like a nice thing to continue yep. thematically. The new project is the Think Anthology called Red, White, Black, and Blue. It, it's it's far out. It's funny. At the same time, it's very pointed. So it's a gentle way of making a very strong political point. They're really oh, he, funny. Keith, Keith, is, Keith is very funny. Keith is, funny. Keith is not only funny, he's delightful. He has a pleasure to work Most with Most cartoonists would be thrilled to have a fourth book coming out, and Keith certainly is, but he wants yeah, um, more. Right. Let, let's kind of write that stuff down. San Francisco's Cartoon Art Museum has invited Keith to exhibit his work in a show called Alternative to What? The show highlights work from some of the brightest talent in alternative comics. 
While it's great that Keith has received this kind of recognition from his peers, it doesn't necessarily mean that his audience is growing. I don't think there's anyone, anyone looking at my work, really. Maybe if I stand here, somebody will come by and check it out. Promoting his own work is a full-time job, one that he hopes will someday result in national syndication. I would love to have my stuff everywhere. I would love to have my stuff in, in, in major daily papers so people see it. So far, it's been a tough sell. Keith gets his ideas from every aspect of his life. One of the richest sources of material is his hip-hop garage band, The Marginal Profits. The band goes well with the cartooning because the cartooning is such a solitary thing. And in the band, you're working with, with other people. Here, I sit here by myself in this chair, kind of hunched over, just drawing this thing in practical silence, you know. Whereas at a show, it's immediate feedback, you know, at a concert, they'll either walk out or they'll boo, or, you know, people will be into it. They'll hit the dance floor. Nothing better when you start playing. And people have never heard your stuff before, and they start dancing for it. Every year, the world's largest comic book convention takes place in San Diego, and Keith is there, ready to go with a box full of books, CDs, and T-shirts to sell. Ah, yes, Comic-Con. Ah, yes. Comic-Con is just, it's, it's great. It's where a geek can be a geek. Everybody who got beat up in high school shows up in San Diego for four days of just, you know, just bathing in it, you know. Superheroes, Dungeons and Dragons, fantasy, just all this different stuff just converges. You know, along the fringes, you can find everything, and I'm one of those fringe guys. I've been going there for eight years. The first probably six years I squatted, I'd, I'd sneak in the artist alley and sit down at an empty table. I built up a following down there because of that. No, I really like your comic. I read it whenever I get up there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. My goal in Comic-Con is the same thing every year, which is to sell books and have a good time. These are the last two. The last two of these right now. Perfect. All three. Um, 12, 12, 24, 13, 37. This is the most money I, I have all, all year, really. But I don't mind doing time for a crime like this. I get a lot of letters from, from white males who are in their 50s. And they're the only ones who actually say exactly who they are. I'm a, I'm a white male in my 50s, 53-year-old white male. That's generally the thing I get. And they say, I can't believe that, you know, I can relate to your strip. Like, your strip I can relate to more than anything else. I always write back to them like, why is that such a big surprise? I hope that, uh, that people learn things, not just the particular, the, the surface, text messages that I'm trying to, to send out, but also just the idea of what you can do with the medium. I hope people look at my stuff and go, oh wow, that's a, I've never seen a strip do something like that before, that's pretty cool.